So thank you very much, Nadia, for this introduction. Thank you to all of you. It's very impressive to be in front of so many people. Uh, the idea of my talk is to talk about the six first month uh, of our project, mainly dealing with the digitalization of the collection of stoneflies, mayfly in Swiss institution. And we also try to be as efficient as possible. And so we try different new approach uh, to be as efficient as possible. So maybe a few words on mayfly and stonefly. Uh, not everybody is um, very uh, interested in uh, this small insect, except maybe the fishermen. Um, so first, ephemeroptera, sorry, there is a mistake in the first word that I wrote. He is missing in ephemeroptera. In English, we also say mayfly because it's the, the, the flies that are, the, they are mainly fly, flying in May, and in, in German, Eintagsfliegen. Uh, it's a small order, less than 4,000 uh, species in the world, but very dynamic. You have to imagine that during the last 10 years, more than 500 species are described in the world. And just in Lausanne, there are about 150 species described during the last 10 years. Uh, the larvae, you can see on the bottom of the picture, living in water, is widely used to um, assess the water quality all over the world. The adults is just living for a few hours or a few days, is not eating at all, just reproduction. The Coptera stonefly are the sister group. It's almost the same size. It's the same way of living. It's also a very um, uh, active group with a lot of species described recently. Uh, the adults is living a little bit longer. Where are the main collection in Switzerland? So there are two different cases. There is the case of the, our project, and there is something a little bit different in Zurich. So when I'm talking about Switzerland, it's everywhere except Zurich, because Zurich made his own digitization of the collection. So when I give number, when I give things like that, it's everywhere in Switzerland except Zurich, sorry. And so this project, uh, there are about eight, um, 85,000 occurrence all over. 80 of them, 80,000 are just in Lausanne. Also, according to the number of species with type material, the main collection are in Lausanne. It's probably the reason why uh, I'm the leader of this project. But there are also some very interesting collection in Basel and in Geneva. The, they are important both from uh, the, the size, but also for historical reason. You have to imagine that in Geneva, part of the collection of Pictet, collecting more than uh, 150 years ago, is stored there. So there are a lot of type material, for example, in Geneva, 100, more than 100 type material for this. Also, there are some interesting small collection in our institution, and we will also uh, digitalize them in Bern, Neuchâtel, Sion, and Arvers. If you have also to, to consider that we have type material in Switzerland of about 800 species. It's about 10% of the species known in the world, not only. So the, the collection in Switzerland is not only important for Switzerland, not for Europe, but for the whole world. When we are talking uh, to a general audience about uh, insect collection, everybody is thinking about uh, a pin with an insect on, and you have everything in jars. So this is the case only for 10% of the collection of mayfly and stoneflies. Most of the collection are in fluid, in alcohol. See, the main reason is that the the, um, the specimen, especially the larva, have a very, very uh, soft cuticle, so they are very fragile. So for long-term preservation, 
only alcohol is valuable. So the, all the pine specimens uh, correspond to old material and all the recent, more recently, what was collecting during the 50 last years are stored in alcohol. And there is also a very important part of the collection that are on slide because for identification and all, especially for the, um, when you are describing new species and you need to be very precise, you really need to have the mouth parts and other things like that on slide for uh, picture, um, drawings, and so on. So here you can see a box, and you can see all the red spots that correspond to type material. So there are also different kind of collection. The most important is, of course, the type material. And for all the type material, we take picture, we take picture of the labels, we take the picture of the specimen, and we take the picture of the slide. In this case, it's a species that we recently described from Thailand, and we have in Lausanne some specimen in alcohol, and we have also the reference slides. For this, we use a digital microscope for taking picture of all high quality for the specimen, for the labels, and for the slides. For the historical material, for the material which is on the pin, we need first to take all the label out of the pin and take a picture of all of them. It's very important to have very accurate picture again to avoid that later we have to remove again and again these labels. And, and what is important is that in, in most of the collections that we have curated, there is a huge number of labels per pin. So the, the average is between five and eight labels per pin. So it's impossible to have everything in one shot if you take a picture, for example. And of course, you can have some materials that are both type material and historical material is especially the case for the, the collection of Picte, which is housed in Geneva. Other material which represent a great part of our collection, here you have the mass survey made for the biodiversity monitoring in Switzerland. So all, all this material is stored in uh, the collection in Lausanne. So again, it's a different way of uh, dealing with the, um, the digitalization of this kind of material. And here you have a, col uh, a picture of the collection of the exotic material um, of mayfly that are stored in Lausanne. And if you look just at the, the, the different um, um, uh, the colors that you have on, they correspond, in fact, to the different biogeographical area. So in just one shot like this, you can see that we have materials that came from all over the world. So now the state of the art after six months. So we have digitalized some type material which correspond uh, roughly to 1,400 1, occurrence. Some historical material, mainly in Geneva, a little bit more than 1,000 occurrence. And also we start with the large collection in, uh, in Lausanne. And we have something like um, 17,000 occurrence. In this, we don't take in account the projects that we start in Basel. So the, the number are a little bit higher than that. If we consider that this is more or less six months of work, you can multiply by four, and you will arrive to um, 85,000 occurrence in 24 months, which corresponds roughly to the, um, the target. It's also the number of occurrence that we expect to find in uh, Switzerland. And so more or less, we will be able to, to, to finish the, the project on time. Knowing this value, we can try to evaluate the time we need for each of the occurrence just by dividing the time by the number, um, sorry, I don't remember in which time to do it. But anyway, you can calculate relatively simply. 
So for type material, it's a little bit complicated because you can have a very, very simple material or you can have slide plus material in alcohol and so on. So the, the, the average is a little bit less precise than in other case. It's between seven and 15 minutes per occurrence. For historical material, if you remember, you have to take the labels out and so on. So it's around five minutes. And for large collection, is 2.5 minutes per occurrence. So the idea, how can we save time? How can we, we be more efficient? What appears relatively rapidly, it's not possible for pine spy specimen because we, there are this problem with the numerous labels. We have to take them out. And also the, the material is very fragile, so we need to, to deal with them very carefully. And also it's only a small part of the collection. So if we have to try to find something, it's more for the material in alcohol, in vial. So in fluid, can we save time, for example, by taking picture, picture of the labels for uh, afterward may, can be able to make the capture of the, the data or picture of the specimen. If you look here, that it's an impossible with a single picture. You can have a, a picture with the data matrix, but you cannot read, not read the label. You, can, you have only a part of the information and the specimen is completely hidden behind the label. So the idea and the process that we, uh, we try to, to implement in our research now is the system that is developed in London and it's called VIAL. So VIAL Imaging Label Extraction and this, um, the system is relatively simple. You just need a camera of very good quality with good quality of lenses. You need um, a rotating stage to put the VR on, and you just need a small support for the um, uh, data matrix code. The working flow, you put first the, the VR in the center of the rotating stage. You take a picture every second, which corresponds to an angle of, of uh, each time of 72 degrees. And then you obtain five pictures of the vial under different angles. And then there is some automatic process that have been made in, in London. So first, all the, um, the pictures are automatically renamed according to the data matrix code and then it's cropped it to limit it the, the size of the, the picture, and then the five pictures are stick together. So here is the result. So you can see the, the vials in, uh, in different angles, and it's relatively easy to read the, the data um, on the, the locality on the first two picture, and also the second label corresponding to the identification is clearly visible on the picture number four. All in all, it takes around three minutes per vial, so a little bit more than what we uh, have seen for a single vial in mass um, collection. But in the end, we have a picture of the, um, the vials, which is relatively important, so we can know the, the state, exact state of the, the material, even if we don't have detail on it. And also, we can go back to the, um, the verba team, because if there is something which are not sure, we can have a look later on. And finally, also, you can, it's not necessary to be in the lab, to have all the collection at disposal. You can be at, at home and in the office or when you are coming back from uh, this uh, meeting or in the train, you can uh, proceed with the transcription of the data. If you make a research on the, the data portal of the Natural History Museum of London, and of course the only interesting uh, um, request that you will make is ephemeroptera, and you will also choose in spirit, you will obtain something like 2,600 results. 
and it's typically the kind of picture that we, uh, we, we made for, for our collection. So you can see, and what about artificial intelligence? Can we use it to be even more efficient? I will be very pleased to sell some dream to you. For example, by uh, stitching the label, so choosing which, on which picture you can see the, the original label, and then you crop the, um, the label, uh, but not only of the, the picture of the whole vial, but really of the labels, and then you change in black and white, and then you can make the OCR, optical character recognition, and then you obtain the full verbatim. It sounds interesting, there are some publications on that, but in the reality, it doesn't work. Why? First, because some of the steps cannot be made by computer only, so it may need to be manually made. It takes time. It's a boring uh, option. And also, OCR is not so efficient that we can expect it, especially when there are some writing labels. You can just imagine that there is, often you have the two first digits that are printed for the year, for example, the two and zero, and the two last digits are not um, adjust and writing, and if you use OCR, these two digits will not appear or will be wrongly uh, interpreted. So you need to check that the OCR correctly copy the, the things, and also here in this case, we just have something which is completely uh, um, printed, so you can expect that it's more or less correct, and also the position of the labels is perfect, and even in this case, it does not work. So all in all, we really need some people to do the work, so I, will, I want to uh, say thank you to the different persons that work for the digitization of this collection, mainly from the museum in Lausanne, so Laura, Sophie, Laurent, and Noemi. I would like also to thank the different curators that support this project and open the collection and make this uh, project possible. And also, of course, I want to thank the uh, Senat and the Swiss Colnet for the financial support. And thank you for it. <laughs> for... Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean Luc, for, for this crucial talk on well, the need of. Uh, hands over the, the machine yet. Maybe it will change in a decade or so. We have time for one question. Peter, just please speak in the mic. So, how do you store your data? How do you, re in what system? So it's a good question. We, are, uh, we also have a database in, in FileMaker and uh, most of the, our data that we have previously of this project are on this database. We have only two databases, one for the vertebrate and one for the invertebrates. But we are supposed to move one day or another to a new uh, database. So for the moment, we just keep the, all the data on Excel sheet, knowing that it's just a transitory situation. Thank you.